the scale doesn't cause the actual these uh, random events the scale of them doesn't cause an entire massive structure like a human brain to suddenly turn into marsh or coffee to suddenly turn into cyanide however what it does cause changes in is the tiny you know atomic reactions which happen so this coffee after a while for example it might sorry it's, it's hot chocolate actually. it might go off for example or it might you know and these these kind of everyday known reactions which happen the same as the everyday you know neurotransmitter reactions in your brain these these kind of interactions themselves um, have a kind of uh, are caused by the subatomic particles which are in turn caused by uh, not caused sorry which are um, affected by this inherent randomness if that makes sense so it doesn't mean that suddenly stuff massive you know structures suddenly disappear and they suddenly reappear it could simply mean that there, there's quantum entanglement of various things which means you know communication between things you know which are separated by physical distance mm -hmm. and if you read there's a really good article on the BBC science website which actually explains how even photosynthesis is is highly affected by quantum mechanics so so basically absolutely no your brain will not turn too much your coffee will not turn into cyanide however the the normal uh, the normal reaction the normal chemical reactions the more the normal interactions of the atoms within your brain within your coffee are determined by quantum principles okay. and these quantum principles are inherently in turn themselves caused by randomness so okay. what I am saying is if for example we have some sort of omniscient being or whatever which can which knows or if you if you manage to somehow figure out the position the quantum state of every single atom of every single subatomic molecule in the whole world you will not be able to predict what will happen in the future after that mm -hmm. because of this inherent randomness. Well, for starters, you I never said we could predict anything or that the world was deterministic. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm struggling to, to, to hear is like to move forward. Is I get where you're coming from, yeah. and I agree that subatomic particles are random. No disagreement there. I'm talking about the next yeah. step. So, okay, these are random. Their effects are minuscule and barely register on the level of proton. That's what you said, not what I said. Sorry, I, I, if I said that, I'd like to take it back. I might have said it wrong. Sorry. All right. So, so their effects are are, are are barely measurable, but they have some effect on the real world. But how are these effects affecting the real, the larger reality? And, well, and that's they, what they, I'm they disputing. Are is that they every... almost don't. Okay. Because okay. Because the subatomic particle, the quantum particles have an inherent randomness yes. in them, and these We're and these that, yeah, yeah and these quantum. Uh, these quantum subatomic particles in turn make up the atoms of the everyday world and these atoms make up the molecules of everyday world okay. and these molecules make everything around us now if the subatomic particles have in them inherent randomness how could you possibly say that will not affect everything in our world the randomness you don't see it in large scale in terms of trees suddenly disappearing and reappearing Can you just clear something up because you said yeah like the normal chemical reactions, yeah. they're caused by inherent randomness. They all pre they all have predetermined changes. Yeah. And you said if if by if by definition they have inherent randomness, how can they be predetermined? How can the changes be predetermined if they are inherently caused by randomness? We're pretty good at predicting chemical reactions. We yeah, are, we are, we are but we aren't able to predict. Yeah. If it's caused we aren't by able to predict. We aren't able to predict radioactive decay uh, unless it's in large scales, like oh, no, unless it's you know. I totally agree, but yeah, again, and, and you're beta decay, we aren't able to know because that's caused. If, if you get, if I give you a single oh, atom, and I tell you determine when this will beta decay, nuclear beta decay. Could you? No, of course not. But now, now, now. Sorry, may I just finish this? Now, therefore, if, if you get a whole bunch of uh, particles, you are able to predict in a roundabout way with the nuclear... I forgot its name, sorry. Uh, the nuclear decay reaction. I forgot its name. Sorry. Uh, but basically, you could predict roughly how much of the atoms would decay in a certain time, in a certain time frame, by general logarithmic... Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, you aren't able to predict a single atom. And the thing is, in a deterministic world, or in, in, in the world around us, everything's made out of atoms. So we are not able to predict the exact...
exact behavior of any single atom. However, in large-scale voting, we are able to generally predict things, you know? I mean, what I'm arguing isn't that controversial. I'm just arguing about quantum theory. Um, no, but originally we were talking about free will, and you seem to suggest yeah. that quantum mechanics in some way averts determinism. In other words, I, I'm a determinist. I think if we roll the clock back to the beginning and the universe expanded again, we'd, we'd be standing here again. We could not be, otherwise we'd be in a different universe. I, I used to believe that, but unfortunately... Yeah, but, but you haven't given me a reason to... to, to inquire in my view is wrong so because yeah. what all you've talked about is is quantum mechanics i'm asking you and he's asking you yeah. how does that affect our free will okay um, i believe human decision human um, human action you know decisions you take are caused by uh, your brain the chemical reactions within your brain now these chemical reactions are caused by molecules and atoms and these atoms themselves and the subatomic you know um, molecules inside there, these have an inherent randomness. Now, it, the effect might be really, really small, but of course there is, like, it might be like, it won't, but of course, inevitably, it will have to have some effect. Because, for Why? example, for example, in terms of our synapses, in order to conduct a nerve impulse or block it, it has a certain threshold principle. And these threshold principle are um, kind of uh, are kind of uh, determined by the chemical reactions of the neurotransmitters. Now, these in turn are affected, like every other atom in the universe, by quantum mechanics, quantum randomness, and all that. So, therefore, of course, that will eat. No matter how small it is, it will definitely introduce a certain um, a certain um, degree of uncertainty. The problem you have, and it's what he's highlighted, is you're saying it on the subatomic particles. At what point does it? What point does it become? Um, what, at what point does it have an effect on us in the real world? I'll, I'll give you a... I'm awful oh, sorry, that's the third time you asked that question. Can I... Can and I, I, I believe I answered it already. All you did was give me a reductionist view. It's not a... Re You've just said okay. particles, sub and, and the, the, the bottom one has got randomness. Therefore, everything else must have randomness. Yeah. But when he asked you, my, my, is my cup going to disappear? Am I going to become a blob? You said, no, no. In the, in the, in the big world, it, the randomness isn't an effect. So my question is, at what point does randomness stop taking an effect? Is it at the quantum level or is it higher than the quantum level? I, I think you guys don't understand the exact degree of randomness there is. We aren't talking about entire atoms disappearing, reappearing. We know that. Let's, let's move so on. So if, if you know that, yes, how is it you're I'm arguing the I'm same not, thing I'm about not. why does not my cup turn for into For a simple coffee, reason, for, for a simple reason. You're, you're using, using the same the argument. No, no, no. Trust me, you are. You're, you're using deterministic logic to prove that something deterministic can't exist. Is that underlying all of this is uncertainty, but you can't go from uncertainty to the material world that is tangible. That is where the argument lies. Now, if you're going to talk about my decision-making principles sorry, on a subatomic level... No, no, I trust Trust me, believe me, I understand exactly what you're saying. No, Whether so I or not, he doesn't understand. understand. Yeah. Okay, so so you're talking about yes, underlying all of this is uncertainty in the subatomic level. Yeah. And and I said right out from the very first very first statement, I completely agree with that. What I'm struggling to understand is the point where it goes from random, barely visible, hard to measure, very small and minuscule, and scale that out to such a thing as a human being making a decision based on a lot of things that have. Not Nothing to do with atoms. So a human being, nature, nurture, conditioning, culture, uh, brain chemistry, there's a lot of things that go into a single person making a decision. You're reducing that to it can't possibly be deterministic because the underlying subatomic structure is random. And, and, yeah. and I'm trying to see where, okay, I'm, I'm up here and okay. you're all the way down here and I'm trying to find a way to get to the middle to prove your point and you're not giving me anything. Okay. Okay. Where's the point it below? Where it becomes yeah, so he's inferring, that's what he's doing. He's, he's yeah. The yeah. thing is, the inherent randomness is based on the quantum, you know, the quantum subatomic part. Yes, we That's agree on that all of that. Yeah. 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 No, no, but of course it'll have to work its way. Why? No. How, how do you demonstrate okay, well, You just made an assertion that you have to back exactly. up. Okay, what are protons made of? You tell me. I don't know. What are protons made of? 
quarks. quarks. Are made from quarks. Yes, correct. Quarks. So what are quarks made of? <laughs> so on and quarks so on. Are made of like, uh, no, the point is, what you need to understand, my friend, yeah. Yeah, is they're only asking you at what point does that inherent randomness that exists everywhere, we agree, at the subatomic scale, what point does that inherent randomness become non-randomness, become something tangible? It doesn't become non-randomness. We only have... I don't know, think he understands us. He's making an inference which he can't back up. Not, but you said you're not a determinist, so maybe I can chat to you. Why are you not a determinist? What point on scale does it change from... I, I'm a, I'm a, I hold a fairly common uh, There are some things we can determine to a degree of certainty, but all that certainty is normal because at the end of the day, humans are also So it can be the observation of this is going to be a tough percent that is unaccounted for. Then we've gone on to further my experience of shock, but you're still at a very high level. Do you think if we round the clock back an hour, we, we would be able to do something different here at the Speaker's Corner? To determine that. Yeah. So I have no idea. If I was to drop this glass, can you determine, no, but and you see the point, can you determine how I was holding the glass at the picture? I'm just going to see the hand. So rolling back is actually harder than rolling forward. Well, in a different sense. If determinism is true, then everything that happened from the Big Bang until now was determined, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't call it determinism. Exactly, yeah. So if we roll the clock back, whatever happened would happen exactly the same way. We, we, we wouldn't be able to do anything different. That's my view, only because I haven't seen a competing view that's better than that. Compatibilism, which is the competing view that most people, or even the majority of people seem to suggest, still doesn't give me uh, a reason to believe in free will in the sense of compatibilism. Okay. Because if I ask you, what do you mean by free will? You know, you're no, the right what, what, what do you mean by free will? Well, for starters, I, I think free will exists, but it is a matter of perspective. It exists. So to you and I, there is nothing external compelling us to move in a direction or even have this discussion. But from a perhaps different perspective where time becomes irrelevant, the fact that you and I are having this discussion or I drop the glass is something that you can easily determine. But, it's a, but, but, but that's the argument I have with religion. Do you, do you, does, do you feel like um, free will needs to be in, do you need to be in control? In other words, um, do you think you're in control of all your actions? No, okay. no. I, I, I think as far as who a human being is, our identity is a byproduct of both nature, nurture, and a lot of external elements, so that you and I, we're, we're an amalgam of lots of different influences, so even that, just the fact that I'm making a decision or speaking English or, or standing upright is a byproduct of my environment. Of my so you would agree that you don't know the next thing you're going to do? No. I'm not 100. I can infer to some extent, but if you're going to ask me what am I going to do tomorrow, no, I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in which case, um, I don't know how you could claim a, f a free will, because most people think of free will as being in control. Like, I can control this hand, I know what I'm going to do, yeah. and I know the next thing that's going to happen. So, so the question of free will, no, I get where you're coming from, but it becomes a question of am I being compelled? So free will for me is what is compelling me to take this action? There is nothing compelling me to take this action. But the fact that I'm making the decision, what is behind it, it's not like an independent entity, it's an entity that is influenced by external factors as well. Sure. Nothing is forcing me in a specific, it's like, I must do this, I'm not an atomic one. No, but, but, but when, I, when I talk about control, I mean you're in control, not that somebody else or, or external influence is controlling you, yeah. I mean, do you think that free will means for you being in control of the next thought you're going to think? Because if you don't, which I think you said, yeah. then we don't have free will in the sense that most people understand. When I ask people, have you got free will? They, most people say yes. And what they, if I have to unpack it like we're doing now, and I ask them, they would say, yes, they think they can control what they're going to do, the next thing they're going to do. And you and I, I think, agree yeah. that we can't. Otherwise, it would mean you've got to think the next thought you're going to think before you think it. Well, Otherwise, a, it just comes into your brain. It is, a, there, again, it's a messy answer. So, so to answer your question, yes, I do have some control over what I do. But the thoughts going through my head, if, and, then, and when you practice mindfulness, you see this occurring. It's like random things popping up. Correct. Uh, so, so you don't have full control of that, but you do have control over certain actions and things that you do. 
And there's a case in point of having this conversation right now. This is a controlled discussion, all done by choice. We're not compelled to be here or even compelled to defend this argument. There's nothing stopping me from going a full 180 and becoming, you know, Mr. Christian <laughs> or Mr. Muslim, or it doesn't. So, so this is all under my control. But why would I choose to do this? What interests me in coming here? This is another issue of nature versus nurture yeah, yeah. and all of that. So again, it's not. I don't want to say it's a yes or no. It's ne it's never binary. That's that's the experience I have. It's never a yet black or white. There's almost always some messy one or two somewhere in the middle. <laughs> but that's that's my point of view. You know, it's uh, <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Um, I'm going to talk about it on the show next week. So that's why I was interested in what people believe here, because yeah. uh, we do a show on a Friday night, and then I'll, I'll talk about this because obviously, yeah, yeah, gin and tonic show. If you go and type in gin and tonic on a Friday at eight o'clock, we we do Google Hangouts um, because a lot because theists obviously believe they got free will. They have to believe it. Yeah, any any theist goes, God is giving me free will. Otherwise, you know, the whole God people would be irrelevant. So they all think they have free will, um, which I don't believe from a theistic point of view. Never mind. But I don't believe it even if I'm not a theist. That's, yeah. So my position currently is not compatibilism. I'm a determinist. So if, if I rolled it back, I would do exactly. I would wake up this morning and do exactly the same things I did. I would not do anything different. Because cause and effect overrides quantum uncertainty and everything else. And I would be doing this again. Otherwise, we'd be in a different universe. Absolutely. In which case, it's full determinism. The thing is, I get where you're coming from, and I don't have an answer to that. It's like, yeah. is it not? Is that like, really what's going to happen? I, 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 no idea. I, 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 There's no way for me to prove it. There's no way for it. Extrapolating backwards is actually harder than extrapolating forwards. If you think about it. Yeah, well, no. It's just to make it's just to make the point about cause and effect. Yeah. If cause and effect is true, which most of us, if we think about it, it is. So he wants to try and get away from it with quantum uncertainty, um, which I think we agree he's it's, not able to do. No, it's too small to have. It. It's, I was having this argument with, uh, with you know, the counter evolutionists. It's like quantum uncertainty means it. It's like, no, I get it. A subatomic level will not affect the movement of a population or competing species or a famine. You know, that's, that's a oh, if it does, they need to demonstrate it because at the moment yeah. it's just, he's just making an inference. Exactly. Um, I mean, if, you're, if you're talking about a, a virus infecting an RNA sequence in a cell, yes, there's probably some other quantum uncertainty going on in that interaction, but that's one minuscule interaction. It's not going to change the fact that I'm coming to Speaker's Corner or I like coffee or, or I sleep late. <laughs> you know, so. So, so it's what I would consider we have the illusion of free will. We think we've got free will, yeah. but we don't actually have it. Um, our perspective, it feels like free will. Correct. Yeah. It's like an illusion. But if we had all powerful knowledge and we could see our brain, we would we would be able to determine, we'd be able to unwrap why why I lifted this hand and not this hand. Um, in which case, determinism seems to be true. Particularly if, because um, he, even if I granted what he said, even if we granted that there was quantum uncertainty, that still means that we don't have control over it. So in what sense do we have free will? So even if it's, if it's uncertain, what free will do we have? So when I when I mentioned compatibilism, you didn't understand that, but that's fine. But that's what compatibilists believe. They believe that as long as it comes from within inside you, that's free will. But if, if you don't know the next thing you're going to do, in what sense is that free will? Because I, I was listening to uh, Harrison Dennett, Daniel Dennett, so very well respected. And I was listening closely, because I'm in agreement with Harris's view, but I was listening closely to Dennett to go, I actually want to see if I can change my mind, because I think Dennett is a very smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. And in the convers two conversations he had, I struggled to hear something that gave me the view that um, that we have control over ourselves. And he's, as Harris says, is bypassing the control issue and going, hey, we don't need to have control as long as it comes from inside us, whether it's from a quantum uncertainty or a, some other effect. Even though we're not in control, that's still free will. And I'm going, for me, that's not what I would consider free will. I need to, I need to be fully in control, which is seemingly impossible. Um, so I was really listening to Dennett, and um, I just didn't hear it. Apparently, he's got a book. Maybe I'll read his book and see if I can untangle it. Daniel Dennett, yeah, yeah. He's a very famous philosopher because uh, he believes in uh, compatibilism. Harris believes in determinism, and they had a couple of conversations. Oh, okay. um, the libertarian free will, nobody believes in that, which is like we're free to do whatever we want, or that a soul is somehow determining what we do. That's the other. Whatever that is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah.